Good morning. Happy Easter Sunday. He is risen, my friends. Grab your coffee. Let's take a minute. I want to read some scriptures about when Jesus rose from the dead because, my friends, the resurrection changes everything. If the resurrection didn't happen, we wouldn't be believing in Jesus, asking him to be our savior, praying you know, for our miracles and living for Jesus if he did not raise again. Like this changes everything. So let's take some time and read the scriptures around it, okay? Make yourself a little bit comfortable because I'm going to read the Bible this morning and we're going to just get really excited about what Jesus did for us. This is the best gift of all. When he died on the cross, but then when he rose again, changes everything. So here we go. First of all, I want to go back to reading. This is Matthew 27, starting in 62, the guard at the tomb. Because here's what I want to tell you. Jesus had said, yep, I'm going to be crucified. And three days later, I am going to rise again. And I want to read this to you because they knew he said that. And they thought, well, he'll never be able to do that. I'm sure that he's lying and his disciples are going to steal his body. So let, let's read it that in the Bible because the Bible is the truth, my friend. And let's read it. Okay, get comfortable. Here we go. We're going to start reading the guard at the tomb. Okay. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, they call him the deceiver, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. The, this last deception will be worse than the first. See, they were like, he's not really going to rise again. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. So they're like, well, nope. They were guarding him in that tomb. Maybe you don't know the story, so I'm telling you, okay, my friends? And if you already know the story, it's a good review. So now let's go on to the resurrection, okay? So now we're going to go in chapter 28 of Matthew. All right. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. See, this was God, God's power. I'm going to actually go back and read that again because this was God's power that did it. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and they became like dead men. They were right up and close and saw it and they just, they were like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Can you imagine? They thought their Savior had died and he was not coming back. They thought their, their best friend in the world wasn't coming back, but he did. Imagine their excitement. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came, they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Can you imagine the scene? Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. 
Now I want to read this to you, my friends. The guards report. Because, oh my gosh, this is not what they wanted everyone to find out that Jesus had risen. Oh no, 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 they wanted a cover up. Listen to the cover up here. You ready for the guards report? Because they were supposed to make sure Jesus did not come out of that tomb. You ready? This is the juicy, the Bible is juicy, y'all. You need to be reading it. You ready? The guards report. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Y'all, it was a cover up. They're like, we got, wait a minute. He couldn't have risen from the dead. No. Paid the soldiers a large sum of money to say this whole story. So it's pretty cool because there's different books out there like The Case for Christ Really Changed My Life by Lee Strobel. It's a good one. He is somebody that, um, and there are many people, but they tried to prove that this did not really happen. The resurrection did not happen. Because my friends, if the resurrection did not happen, Jesus Christ was not who he said he was and, and they had to prove it wrong. But when they investigated and investigated and investigated, no one has ever found his body. He is our savior. And do you understand the significance of that, my friends? That changes everything. That means we can trust what the Bible says. That means you can have a relationship with our, our resurrection, our resurrected Lord. That means he's real. It's This is not a fantasy. That same Jesus can live inside of you, his Holy Spirit. Y'all, he rose again, okay? Nobody found his body. That is exciting news, okay? If you did, if you just think that's um, not exciting news, I don't know. That's the best news of all because Jesus, prom Jesus died on the cross for us. Now, it's really hard to believe he would go through all that for us, for people who are sinners, but he did. And then he did what he said and he rose again. And you know what? You can have a relationship and a, a, just a friendship with that God, that Jesus who died on the cross for you. Here's all you do, my friends. You say, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I am sorry for my sins. And you can name them if you know them. You know, you can do a confession right to Jesus himself. You don't have to go through anybody. You Tell him your sins. That's how you confess. You confess daily to Jesus himself because he died for you. And then you ask him, can you please come into my life and be my savior? And he will. My friend, he will. And let me tell you something. The Bible is alive. Read it daily. That's where my life changed. That's where the resurrection change in my life is when I started reading my Bible daily. See, now I asked Jesus to come into my life at a young age, but I didn't have a daily relationship with him till, oh my goodness, till maybe five years ago or so. When I started learning to be a chaplain, I realized, I'm a hospice chaplain, by the way, I realized, oh my goodness, I cannot um, do my job. I cannot go talk to people if I don't have time with Jesus first. So I read the Bible every day. I love Psalms. Ooh, I park myself in Psalms a lot. It just encourages me and I want to encourage others. That's why this is called Joy for Joe. Joy with Joe. Sorry. John is a wonderful place to start if you're a new believer. But get yourself in the Bible every day. It's alive. And guess what? You know why I say it's alive? That Because the Bible, because that's what it says. It's alive. But you can read a verse today and it means something completely different next week. And next year, you keep reading it and the Lord keeps blessing you. And you can share the joy with others. 
then you get in a good church that's actually preaching the Bible. Get in one that has a good small group to support you because God does not want us to do life alone. That same Jesus that rose again, he has a plan for you and he loves you. Can I pray for you, my friend? Let's get excited about this day, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Father God, for dying for us and for rising again because this changes everything. And I pray that my viewers would get excited and realize that you're real. You do have a plan for them despite all their disappointment. You understand disappointment, Father God. You understand it. You have gone through everything that we have gone through. That's why you came. And you lived on earth for 33 years so you could feel our pain and you want to save them. And I pray they would ask you to come into their life and their life would be changed forever. And that they would shine their light for you. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you enjoyed this video, would you spread the joy? I would like the joy to fill the whole earth of Jesus because it's good news. Good news. My friends, Join me tomorrow, join me the next day, and let's all spread the joy of Jesus. God bless you.